Okay, I ready? am ready to go. You are handsome. You've got this. You are intelligent. You are a relatively interesting human being. So. Uh, I I am I'm six foot four. I have a degree in archaeology, and <laughs> do you actually? I do. I actually do. <laughs> I'm a trained archaeologist. Why do you work here? Yeah, if there's any I don't know dinosaur museums who need PPC or something, <laughs> hit us up. Today, we're talking about the relationship between agencies and their clients, and specifically looking at communication and whether or not it's okay to sometimes push back, say no, or have a difference of opinion. It's definitely something that I've seen uh, in the last 10 years of work, uh, but especially in the last couple of months here at WSI Paid Search, a lot of instances, and I've had to be maybe sometimes a bear of bad news for just saying no and just letting clients and our stakeholders know that what they want or the intentions that they have just aren't realistic. What was the type of business? Uh, what was the nature of the request? Why did you say no? And what was the situation? And ultimately, how did that benefit them? Uh, they do furniture and they do workplace and office consulting. The, the specific example that comes to top of my mind is uh, wanting to create a campaign around a specific industry that given given the times that we're in right now just wouldn't be realistic we've had conversation with them before of course looking at their their previous business data what they wanted to do made sense from a previous point of view but in terms of what was realistic right now it, it wasn't going to work and that's after doing the the keyword volume research that's after looking at the their competitors looking at what's happening in the industry right now but at the end of the day knowing that what we were telling them was not only true but was going to save them money in the long term when a client or a business wants to do something and in your professional capacity are saying, no, that's respectfully not a great idea. Here's why. Here's a better alternative. How do you get them to listen to you? I mean, what's the key factor that ultimately will say, we'll move that conversation positively? It definitely comes down to trust. Um, I think in any relationship, be it business or personal, if you're not trusting the communication that's happening, you're either not going to respect it or you're not going to value it as much. I think that's what really puts us ahead in terms of a lot of, not just in terms of competitors, but in terms of PPC as a whole. We're not, and especially me, not quick to just say yes and figure mm -hmm. out the details later. It's looking at the research looking at what's out there, what's already being done, what can be done, and then making sure that we educate our clients, but then also knowing that we've built up that trust, that they take that education and they accept it. That actually does remind me of something you and I worked on together a couple of weeks ago. The university came to us and said, hey, we want to add campaigns for these additional courses and degrees and programs. Here's our budget. Here's the campaign types we want you to do. Here's the timelines. We looked at that and just thought, this is never going to fly. This doesn't make sense. Cramming too much money into too short a space of time, not enough relevant search volume for this particular program or course in the area that they want to promote. You know, good ways to get clients to trust you is to say, don't give me your money. <laughs> How many clients do you have, Tyler? Uh, last time I checked is 37, 36, 37 around there. Okay, well, you're not working hard enough. You should have 50. <laughs> <laughs> How on earth do you have coherent conversations in their language for every different industry? Well, it, it definitely has comes with a lot of education that we have to do on our end. And there's also that really, really important trust component. And it's, it's listening to the client. There's also that huge trust component from our end as well. We build that trust with the information that we give them knowing that we are not experts in auto bodies or wedding venues, but we're experts in PPC. Yeah, and meeting in the middle. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes our mindset as marketers and business growth experts is, you know, how can we look at things a different way? Like I remember one of our clients that is a funeral home said to us, why are our leads down or why is our performance down compared to earlier this year or this time last year? And in the absence of any other rational explanation, we went and did some research. And I remember doing this. I was Googling mortality rates in Ontario, Canada, <laughs> because I was at a loss. And uh, you get this government provided data, right? And insights on mortality rates and you know how many people are dying and when and how that compares to previous years. And you know that kind of helped us to make sense of the picture. I think sometimes whilst we might not be experts 
in every element of our clients' businesses, at least at the outset, we can look at things differently, right? And bring our mentality and again, ask the right questions, meet in the middle and uh, find the right solutions, right? Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. We hope you enjoyed it. Please hit like, subscribe, share, get notified. And most importantly, have a wonderful day. Thank you very much. Cheers. Uh, so what does the devil say uh, when he's unpleasantly surprised? I don't know, Jack. What does the devil say when he's unpleasantly surprised? <laughs> what the here? <laughs> <laughs>